Hey everyone, my name is Asta Chohan. Welcome to the Tutorials Point. In the previous video, we have learned all about the hierarchical clustering. And in this video, we are going to talk about PCA, Principal Component Analysis. So let's see what's in for you in this video. We are going to talk about dimensionality reduction, principal component analysis, PCA important terminologies, what are the properties of principal component analysis, how PCA works, and an example for PCA. So let's first, let's talk about the dimensionality reduction. As the name suggests, it is the reduction in the dimensionality. What does that mean? It means it is the reduction of the number of variables in a data set. On the screen, you can observe that we have this 3D data set and after dimensionality reduction, it becomes 2D. If we observe from the X and Y plane, we observe the rectangles. And if we observe from the Z and Y plane, we observe the straight lines. That means these cuboids becomes rectangle. Now, let's understand the dimensionality reduction with an example also. We have this data set and we have five features in this or five attributes, company, item, order ID, price and quantity. And we are using these attributes for predicting the future sales. And after the correlation analysis, we observe that only the three features or three attributes are relevant for predicting the future sales. That is item, price and number of quantity. So we reduce this data set into this data set that has only three attributes or three variables. This means this is a three dimensional data set. Now the question arises, why dimensionality reduction is important? In previous algorithms that we discussed, we face some problems and dimensionality reduction helps us in reducing those problems also. Like less dimension means less computation or less training time. It also removes the similar entries and that helps us in reducing the or removing the redundancy. A space required to store the data is also reduced and it is easier to plot the 2D or 3D plots. Dimensionality reduction also helps us in finding the more significant features or attributes and it also leads to the better human interpretation. Now let's talk about the principal component analysis. It is a technique for reducing the dimensionality of the data set by increasing interpretability but at the same time minimizing the information loss. We reduce the dimensionality of the data set for our convenience. But we never want to lose the information. So for minimizing the information loss, principal component analysis comes into the picture. Let's understand the PCA with an example. Let's say we have this group of girls and we have to capture a perfect picture of this group. We try to capture from the right side and we observe that this girl is not visible in the camera. Then we try to capture from other direction or other angles or other side. And finally, we come to the conclusion that this side, this front side and this angle is perfect. All the faces are clearly visible in the camera. So we captured from this angle. In the similar manner, principal component analysis works. Let's say we have this data set and this is our principal component one, PC1, and we are looking at the data points from this direction. What we observe from this direction, the projection of the data points on that principal component, PC1. Now consider the another principal component, PC2, and we are looking at this from the above. And this is the projection of those data points. So for PC1, this is the projection of the data points. And for PC2, this is the projection of the data points. After this, we will compare the principal component 1 and principal component 2 with each other. We can observe in PC1 that points have gap between them and we can see the one point clearly. While in PC2, the points are overlapping. That means in this case, the information is losing. So we will select the PC1 for our further predictions. Now let's talk about the important terminologies of principal component analysis. And first one is view. It is the perspective through which data points are observed. As I told you before, if I'm looking from this perspective, then this is one view. And if I'm looking from this direction or this perspective, then this is the another view. Now next is dimensions. Dimension is nothing but the number of columns in the data sets. Next is principal component. New variables that are constructed as linear combination of the initial variables is called principal components. What is projection? 
projection is nothing but the perpendicular distance between the principal component and the data points. Now let's talk about the properties of principal component analysis. First one is the number of principal component is always less than or equal to the number of attributes. For the given example, there are three attributes, item, price and quantity. For this case, the PCA will be equals to or less than three. Next property is principal components are orthogonal. Suppose we have two principal components and they are parallel to each other. That means they will have the same projection of the data points. And we never want that we have two same principal components as both of them will give us the same results. So we put the principal components orthogonal to each other. That means at right angle to each other. Next property is the priority of the principal component decreases as their number increases. Suppose we have only one principal component. Then the value of that principal component is very high. And if we have two principal components, PC1 and PC2, in that case, the value of both principal component reduces. So that means as the number of principal component increases, the priority value of the principal component decreases. Now let's understand how PCA works mathematically. There are four steps. First is standardization. Second is covariance matrix computation. And third is eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And fourth one is feature vector. Let's first discuss the standardization. So standardization is the scaling of all the variables into the similar range. It is calculated as variable values minus mean upon standard deviation. Now next is covariance matrix computation. Covariance matrix is used to express the correlation between two or more attributes. On the screen, you can observe the covariance matrix for two variables x and y where represents the variance and cov represents the covariance and here you can observe the covariance matrix for more than two attributes here n is the number of the entries and m is the number of variables in multi-dimensional data set if the value of covariance is positive then it indicates that one variable is directly proportional to the another variable and if the value of covariance is negative, then it indicates that one variable is inversely proportional to the another variable. Now let's talk about the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Eigenvectors and eigenvalues are the mathematical constructions that must be computed from the covariance matrix in order to determine the principal components. Eigenvectors do not change their direction after linear transformation and eigenvalues are the scalar values or the magnitude of the eigenvectors. Next is feature vector. Feature vector is simply a matrix that has eigenvectors of the components that we decide to keep as the column. That means feature vector is a matrix that has the eigenvectors of the selected attributes. Now let's understand the PCA with an example. Consider this covariance matrix for more than two attributes, it has n number of entries and m number of variables. So for now, for simplicity, let's consider the three-dimensional coordinate system. And we have plotted these data points in this 3D system. We will calculate the mean of these data points and this red dot is the mean of all the data points. The first principal component, the PC1, will pass through this mean point and the second principal component, PC2, also pass through this point but perpendicular to the PC1. So this is how principal component analysis works and helps us in reducing the dimensionality. So that was it for this video. We have already covered the supervised machine learning algorithms and we are currently doing the unsupervised machine learning algorithms in which we already covered the k-means clustering, hierarchical clustering, principal component analysis in this video. And in the next video, we are going to talk about anomaly detection. So stay tuned with tutorials point. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.